Good afternoon and welcome to our February webinar in our continuing supply chain management series. A couple housekeeping things before we get started. If you have a question anytime during the webinar, you can type it into me and I'll either answer it right then when I say it or at the end of the webinar. And after the webinar is over, I will stay on the line for a couple minutes if you have any other additional questions you'd like to ask one-on-one. -on -one. So without further ado, let's get talking about forecasting seasonal demand. What we're going to look at today is what characteristics demand has to have in order to truly be seasonal demand. We're going to now, then look at the quantitative intrinsic stuff that you need to do the forecast, followed by the qualitative extrinsic. And we'll be talking about them a little bit further clarification as we go along. So here we go. A forecast, seasonal forecast, the one that all of us are familiar with. And if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're looking forward to spring or summer. But we have forecast seasonal for spring, summer, fall, winter. We can tell basic things about that forecast. In spring, the temperature is going to be getting mild and it's warming. In summer, especially here in New Jersey, it gets to be hot and humid. In the fall, it can be brisk and chilly. And in the wintertime, it can be cold and snowy. And in the Northeast here, we've had some uh, very graphic examples of that over the past several weeks. When we're talking about consumer products or any type of product that has seasonal demand, it has to exhibit certain characteristics. Just like a weather forecast allows us to plan for the type of clothing we're going to wear in the next few months so that we can go out and buy summer clothing or winter clothing, seasonal demand forecasting, if you're manufacturing a product or delivering a service, can help you plan what you need for that high demand period. Now, if we take a look at this chart, it shows that this product, its season starts in May, but it really takes off in June, July, and August, and then starts scaling back in the September time frame. In October, it pretty much falls off the face of the earth, and then it has a slight recurrence in November and December. So, with that information, I'm going to put you all to work to answer a question. This poll is with seasonal demand. This is talking about the chart that I just showed you. With seasonal demand that peaks in June, July, and August, what's the product? What I'd like you to do is take a minute. You've got five options there. Pick the one that you think this seasonal demand pattern represents. It's either automobiles, clothing, ice cream, televisions, or video games. So take a minute and click in what you think it is. All right. So everyone was really quick on this. So let's take a look at what this product actually is. Ice cream. Everybody got it right. Congratulations. You all go to the head of the class. It's a product that, in the northern hemisphere at least, when the weather gets warm, we all start eating a lot of ice cream. You think about June, you've got Memorial Day weekend right at the beginning, end of May, beginning of June. You think July, we've got 4th of July. August, typically the hottest month of the year where we're all looking for ways to cool down. Then it starts falling off in September. 
we get a brief resurgence in November and December because when you're at Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner and you want to have that piece of pumpkin pie, you want some ice cream with it. So let's talk about the data that you need to create an accurate forecast for something like this. Quantitative intrinsic is talking about two characteristics of forecasting the data. Quantitative means it's number oriented. Intrinsic means it's something that we in our company already have. This forecast here actually, bear with me one second, shows a pretty stable demand year to year. 401 one year, 399 the second year, 400 the third year. Comes up with an average demand of 400 for the year. However, the demand for this item is not spread equally over the four quarters. We have 128 units in the first quarter, 102 in the second, 75 in the third, 95 in the fourth. Now, where does this data come from? Typically, if you're in the supply side, in other words, manufacturing of supply chain management or inventory control, you've got the data and you capture it every time you ship a product to your customer. So, if we keep track of every shipment of the items or the product family, we have built into our system all the data we need to do the quantitative intrinsic portion of forecasting seasonal demand. The way that you create the seasonal index, which is at the bottom of the screen here, we take the total that we are planning to sell for the year, in this case 400, divide it by whatever breakdown we choose, in this case it's quarters, so our average demand is 100 per quarter. To create that seasonal index, if you look at the first quarter, we take 128, divide it by the average demand over all four quarters of 100, and that brings us up to that 1.28 seasonal index. So we've gotten part of the way there. We've looked at the numbers that we have, the internal data that we have, to figure out what the seasonal index should be. Now, however, we need to look outside of our organization. Where we have been looking in this example has been at what the shape of the demand is going to look at. Putting a tool together to figure out what that is going to be. Now we need to look at what the magnitude of the height of this deviation is going to be. To do that, we need to look outside of the organization. Qualitative extrinsic data. Qualitative means it's not specifically number-based. Extrinsic means it's something external to our organization. Some of the things that are used in qualitative forecasting, customer research, focus groups, what are the customers looking for as improvements to our product? Other items, competitors' actions. Do we have a competitor that just came into the market? Do we have a competitor that has left the market? Marketing to new segments. Do we want to take our product and try and sell it in a market that we have never broached before? Another one is new products. Are we looking at improving the product that we have or bringing in a completely new product to our mix? And finally, the general catch-all, reading tea leaves. There are some types of forecasting techniques that are akin to reading tea leaves. You can't put your finger on it, 
but it produces some pretty good results. When you get there, however, whatever mechanism you use, you come up with a new forecast for, in this case, year four. This time, our sales folks, and typically the sales folks are the ones that do the qualitative forecasting, have indicated that our sales for the year are going to be 420 units. If we look at the average, that's 105 units per quarter, but what we're after in this seasonal forecast is figuring out how that's actually going to play out based on our index. So it's a simple math at this point. You take the average of 105 times the seasonal index of 128 brings us up to the new forecast for the first quarter going forward into this new year of 134. With this, we've now created a seasonal forecast that we can hang our hat on to plan inventory or to plan production going forward into the new year that is a combination of both the qualitative extrinsic stuff and the quantitative intrinsic data that we already have. So wrapping this up, what we've done is we have actually said what this shape is going to be, that's a quantitative intrinsic, and how high the peaks are going to be going into year four. Pretty straightforward stuff. And in a brief review, seasonal demand has a very well-defined season. Now, it doesn't have to have just one season. You can have multiple seasons during the year. You need the numbers of what we've shipped, which is usually the internal stuff that we capture as far as when we ship products, and you need the qualitative extrinsic stuff about where the market's going and what does our forecasting folks that look at the external stuff think that is going to happen with our product. So wrapping it all up, short and sweet, that was forecasting seasonal demand. And if you have any questions, feel free to send them out to me. Yeah, John, I see you got one there. Hang on a minute. Let me unbutton you there. Well, John, you're going to have to type it in to me. I see you've got your hand up. When you type it in, I'll respond to you. And Bruce, I see you've got yours up too. Bruce, you're online now if you want to share your question with me. Can you, you can hear me, Rick? Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, Rick, how often should you look at your uh, your data? You know, like how often should you review your data that, to, to, you know, to, you have like your, your normal averages for each quarter, but I mean, should you, I mean, you should look at these every quarter, your data, and make sure you're, you're accurate going for, for the year? Well, that comes into how dynamic is your demand. Mm -hmm. In the examples that I ran through today, the demand was pretty stable. 400, okay. 420 per year, not much change. Right. What, how frequently am I going to look at that? Maybe every six months or so. Oh, I see. Okay. If I had a product that had demand that every year was growing by 15 mm -hmm. or 20% mm -hmm. and it was still seasonal, then I'd most likely be looking at this thing once a month to see if there are okay. any anomalies coming along. Okay. So it depends on the product and the dynamic of okay. That's correct. Stable and stuff, right. Okay. Okay.